Now I know that radiation occurs all around us and that there are different types of radiation. And depending on its intensity, it can be harmless or harmful to living creatures like you and me. Correct. But wouldn't I be exposed to some ionizing radiation if I step out of the shed? What if I get exposed and I start getting sick because of this radiation? Okay, relax. Like how Marie Curie once said, Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. I will help you understand ionizing radiation further. Let's start with how scientists describe radiation quantitatively. How radioactive something is, is measured in terms of its activity and Becquerel. The higher the activity, the higher also the amount of radiation emitted by the radioactive material. When this emitted radiation hits and gets absorbed by a massive material, scientists use gray to describe how much of the radiation was absorbed by the material. Gray is often referred to as absorbed dose. For living things, this absorbed dose can have an equivalent biological effect. The measure of this biological effect is called equivalent dose when the type of radiation is considered and effective dose when the type of tissue is considered. Both equivalent dose and effective dose use sievert as a unit of measure. Are these units the same ones used for radiation coming from cellular phones? No. These units are only used for ionizing radiation. Okay. How much ionizing radiation are we usually exposed to? If coming from natural sources, a person typically receives 2.4 millisieverts of radiation in one year. Even as we stand here, we are exposed to tiny amounts of ionizing radiation from the ground, rocks, buildings, and cosmic rays, even from you and me. Just so you can get a clear idea, here's a graph of how much ionizing radiation we receive per unit time depending on our altitude. And apart from this, there is ionizing radiation that you can get from man-made sources like x-rays and CT scans. Wow! Radiation is indeed all around us. That's true. In fact, even eating a banana exposes your body to natural radiation. What? Yes, there's even something called BED, banana equivalent dose. It's about 0.1 microsieverts, but this is an unofficial unit of measurement. How can a harmless banana even have radiation? You're right for using the word harmless. You see, bananas contain potassium-40, a radioactive isotope. Potassium-40 also naturally occurs in other foods. Should I still eat this or not? Go ahead. It shouldn't worry you. Because the measure of radiation you get from eating one banana or even 10 in a day is so small. Let's compare radiation absorbed from eating a banana to radiation absorbed from man-made sources of radiation. A full dental x-ray is like eating 500 bananas all at one time. One chest CT scan is equivalent to eating 70,000 bananas all in one day. A fatal dose of radiation is equivalent to eating 8 million bananas all in one go. 8 million? But that's impossible. Of course I can't eat that much. That's why eating just one banana is harmless. In fact, some even say eating up to six bananas a day is healthy. Okay, so I see how bananas are not really an ideal way of measuring radiation around us. Especially radiation that might be harmful to us. How do we detect it? There are radiation instruments that have been invented and are used to detect and measure the presence of radiation. Since there are several effects of radiation, there are also several mechanisms to detect it. This results to various types of radiation detectors. These serve different purposes. Apart from being radiation monitoring instruments, some are also used for personal dosimetry. Cool. 
Having the means to measure radiation properly makes it easier to implement radiation protection standards that are crucial in nuclear science and technology-related industries. These are industries that have been utilizing the benefits of radiation for scientific gain, as well as for diagnosing and curing some diseases. Wow! So there are rules governing the use of radioactive sources. Not anyone can just go inside nuclear facilities, right? Of course not! Radiation protection standards are implemented worldwide. The International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, works hand-in-hand -hand with its member states, like the Philippines, and other international organizations in order to establish and implement safety standards. I feel quite safer now, but if radiation is used in so many aspects of our lives, like x-rays and CT scans, and we encounter it every day from natural sources, and our body does absorb some of it, does that mean these accumulate in our bodies through many years? Aren't we all supposed to be highly radioactive by now? I mean, where does all this radioactivity go? No, our bodies do not accumulate radiation. You do not become radioactive just because you're exposed to radiation. As for radioactive sources, they do not stay radioactive forever. Radioactivity goes away on its own naturally. What? How? Remember how radiation in itself is a process of nuclear decay? Thankfully, any radioactive substance has what we call a half-life. A half-life? Yes, all radioactive substances have a half-life. It is the amount of time it takes for a given amount of substance to reduce its amount into half due to its decay. Then that half that is left is once again reduced into half after another half and so on until all the radioactive substance is gone. It usually takes not more than 10 half-lives for a total decay. Whoa, okay. Different isotopes have different half-lives. For example, uranium-238 is the most common isotope of uranium found in nature. Its half-life is at 4.46 billion years. That's a long time. And then there's silver-94 isotope that has a constant half-life of 0.42 seconds. That means it would take less than 5 seconds for all of its isotopes to decay. That's fast. I guess there's really not much to fear about radiation as long as we know how to protect ourselves. And there are a lot of people responsible for keeping everyone safe. That means I can step out of this shed and still catch my practice. Thanks! But don't you want to know how radiation can affect your body? Oh well, I guess we can talk about it some other time! Music